How's it going guys, Kels Prime here and today I wanted to go over the map of Anthem. We finally almost have most of it available on display thanks to the screen grab that was released. We get to see the final map. As a disclaimer, this will not be a super in-depth look into this, but will be enough to give you a rough idea of just how big this map really is. If you find this useful, a like rating will be greatly appreciated. On to the video. To understand the map size, first we must look at other games and work out how long it takes going from one side to the other in the preferred mode of transport. You can't just run in everything, if another has a faster mode of transport, you do use that as the benchmark. For example, in the division, that would be on foot, with fast travelling not being allowed. In say GTA, that would be by car, so with the base model set, the base criteria set, one of the biggest maps at the time was Fallout 4 and Marco did a good video comparing the map size to that to the division with the two sizes being almost identical in terms of travel time with the mode of transport for both being to run. So you're probably thinking why are you naming other games and other YouTubers and the like for what I'm doing here? An Anthem video? Well one, I think Marco does some amazingly thorough work and two, as this is an age old question, a lot of the legwork is already available for us to use and discern from. So I'll start with the basics, time, going from one end of the map to the next. So we'll start with the fastest, GTA 5, despite its vast map, it takes under 3 minutes to drive from point A to point B. The division, running from point A to point B, one side to the other, takes around 8 minutes and 10 seconds, with Fallout coming next with 9 minutes and 9 seconds just shy of a minute longer. Anthem on the other hand, based on what we know, which I will get into in a bit, takes 9 minutes and 45 seconds of constant flying. Now, obviously you can't indefinitely fly in Anthem and this will also add to even further time in Anthem and it's time to travel. You're probably wondering how the time for Anthem was derived and for good measure during the streams, maybe knowingly, maybe not, the devs were showing travel from one point to the next as it was a direct form of approach. Using that time taken and the scale on the map, it's simple to get an average time for the map you're seeing on screen now. Of course, it's also been confirmed that there are parts of the map missing on top and bottom and what we see here is not the complete map in full as of yet, but for our purposes, it's more than enough. We can see that the map size between the three games are fairly similar. Now, if we take into consideration the fact that you will not always be flying, you're going to be hitting closer to 10.5 minutes to 11 minutes. With that aside, unlike Fallout Under Division, Anthem gives you the ability to fly. This means, as well as a horizontal play base we have here, where it takes 10 minutes to travel, we also have vertical space. This sadly isn't accounted for, and in all honesty, this blows the landscape and the size even more open. Brennan Holmes stated that there is a lot of vertical elements in the map that actually add even more space to the explorable area. Because of this, it's even harder to discern the play space by just the flat nature. Taking this into consideration, you can quickly discern how big the Anthem map really is. During the Q&A, the response John Warner gave was, I want you to start thinking about the world of Anthem less as a flat plane with bumps on it and more like it's a volume, so you take a big open world map and now you open up the verticality of it. Up into the sky, down into the water, and just think about how that multiplies the area that you can traverse and the places you can discover. It's a big world. So we are now looking at a world even bigger than Fallout and the Division, which by and large was massive to begin with. So I know what many of you are asking, how does this world compare to the likes of Destiny. Because let's face it, Destiny is its one-to-one -one rival competitor when it comes to this sort of game, on consoles especially. So, we have this screenshot of the two together. It is just the EDZ, and Destiny does have multiple destinations. IO, Nessus, Dreaming City, Tangled Shore, Titan, Mercury, Mars, The Tower, The Farm, the whole lot. The world of Anthem is still bigger, and that's only on a flat scale. When you look at it vertically as well, you start to understand the sheer size of the Anthem map. And let's not forget the many, many loading corridors that is present in Destiny. Should you really count these? They are just there to load the next section in after all, whereas Anthem is completely open and available for you to go exploring. No loading here, 
it does seem that the majority of the map will be preloaded for you to go explore. That aside, Anthem's world map, which is even bigger than what you're seeing here, confirmed by Bioware, is going to have a vast explorable area. Now we just need to make sure this vast area that is present is populated with things to do. Again, to reiterate, this is a single map that will be available for Anthem. We hope that in the future there will be additional maps that we will get that will allow us to explore new areas and new vast locations, but this is something for the future and maybe for an expansion that may arrive. But that out of the way, the world of Anthem is huge. The fact that it now encompasses both the flat nature and the vertical nature means that there will be hidden discoveries all over the place that will require you not only to be on land but to be in the air and this opens up a whole new dimension to the way we play games. Expect this to have one of the biggest explorable areas you have to date. When the developers say that the area is big and vast, make no mistake, it really is. Of course, it all comes down to population and how populated and vibrant the environment will be. The biggest problem I find with openly vast areas is that they are completely barren and pointless and making me travel for 10 minutes for a pointless and barren location is annoying and is immediately a turn off to me. So just because an area is big doesn't mean it's going to be good. What it does mean is that there will be plenty of places to explore and right now when you think of games like Fallout, The Division, Destiny, GTA 5, Anthem blows all of them out of the water in terms of sheer scale. I hope you enjoyed this size comparison. Again, credit goes to Reddit, Marco for the previous legwork, making this video a lot easier to present, and most of all, you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will get back to you. I do read every single comment and I do reply to all. Until the next video, remain legendary.